Hello again, people. Um, thought I'd give you an update uh, since the last time I posted. Not much has actually happened. I've been um, sanding and scraping the cabinet. I've got the paint ordered, but it's taken a bit longer to be delivered than I expected. So I've gotten bored and decided to move on to working on the lathe, or at least parts of the lathe. Um, here we have the um, tailstock of the um, ML7. As you can see I've already started uh, scraping it all down, getting all the um, paint off it. I don't know how clear this camera is, I think the camera's actually got a fault on it. But in here you might be able to see the um, lime green paint that was plastered all over the tailstock and indeed the whole lathe. I uh, started uh, cleaning it up last night. Um, yeah, what can I say? It's a tailstock, you know. It's got a flywheel which um, when you rotate puts the uh, barrel out. There you go, you can see it slowly um, coming out there. Now, I'm not sure what Morse taper that takes. I think it's a 2, but it might be a 1. I'm not sure, I'll need to look into that at some point. Um, there's the, um, the spigot, or the... This is the... Um, locking lever so that this plate here which is underneath the, the bed of the lathe is pulled upwards and indeed goes tight when it's fitted to the lathe yeah you can adjust it on on the bolt of course and then when you release it it goes slack and you can move the whole tail stock left and right um i've discovered a little brass plaque here uh, on cleaning the lathe which was completely obscured by the paint on a little bit of research I've since discovered that this lathe can or not lathe, this tailstock can move a few degrees um, so that you can do taper turning um, I haven't actually explored that yet um, but I will do in the future I'll come back to that at another time uh, here is um, a guide for adjusting the the um, the freeness of the the guide, if you like. You've got a little, what I they, they call it gib screws, but I think most people these days would call them grub screws. Um, there's one here and another one. And there, I can't actually see what I'm doing here with this camera. It's that dark, and I know that the image is quite blurry when, when um, it's posted online. So I apologise for that. But I'm not working currently. I'm not certainly buying a new camera. So there's the other one, and these basically uh, tighten up and push the bar here up against the, the bed of the lathe so you can adjust its freeness. The tighter it is the more the stronger a grip it will have as well but too tight obviously it won't move anyway so that's that. Um, so I don't have much to say about this, This is I got this um, with the lathe obviously uh, I've been cleaning it up and I've still got a little bit more to do in here in paint removal and uh, also over on this side and around here it's going to be a bit of a chore doing that actually but I'll get it um, basically again all I've been using is one homemade scraper out of an old hacksaw blade um, I had this one made up before for another job uh, there's a blade along the top and a blade along the side and I, I ground up the end as well 
which I wasn't sure about actually because that's also the handle and having a a handle like that and it slipped you know you could quite easily get a gash in your hand but it's fine you know it's it's you know I'm, I'm not putting any a lot of pressure on it it's, it was coming off quite easily just by doing that you know it's um, laborious boring and but it, it, it's doing the job and of course the trusted old um, well <clears throat> I was out, actually, it's a wire brush, but there's very few wires left in it, but you know, it does a job just uh, using it top with the bottom. So, um, yeah, the tailstock, um, it works, it seems okay. Uh, one thing I, two things I've noticed about it, the, um, three things actually, the oiling, the, it's not the nipple, but the, the oiling, oh Christ, the, this bit here, you can see it, the ball which should seal, seal this um, appliance is stuck down there and is indeed covered in paint as well. So that might need to come out and get replaced, although I, I, I don't know how I'll actually get that removed at the moment. Uh, I might, I've looked online and they've they actually um generally they replace these now with oil nipples you know so they actually protrude from the the top of the tail sock but i, I don't actually like that uh, i feel it's just something else that's going to catch in your clothing or just get in the way and get snapped off and actually damage the threads of the tail stock so i quite like the idea of it being sort of semi flush like that uh, so I'd, I'd preferably get the uh, original as a replacement but I don't think will be available anymore um, so that's one fault with the tailstock the other mi m minor one really is there's a a handle on the wheel missing uh, there should also be one over here um, again I would like to get something that was sort of reasonably like the original if the lathe was working of course I could turn one out but it's not at the moment anyway um, so I'll just maybe ignore that for the time being until the lathe is operating uh, of course this is chromed which I won't be able to replicate and indeed there's the hand wheel here um, although it's showing quite a few signs of scraping and the odd uh, neck and bash in it which well for a, an old machine what could you expect? You know, it's not a new machine. Um, and the, the, the final thing, which is a bit of a... The, the worst of the three faults, if you like, is round here. This would be... This is called the barrel thumb locking... The barrel locking thumb lever. And as you can see, it's missing. It's gone. Um, basically, it's just a... It's like a... Uh, a nut that fits on there and then there's just a little lever that you can use and I'm assuming that must pull a sort of cam system inside here tight and lock the barrel so again it's not a big deal I can soon make up a a nut and a little bit of plate welded on the side of it to act as the lever but um, ideally I'd like to get the original so again if anyone has a spare one which I doubt but if they do you know who'll give me a you know who'll give a shout anyway so that, that's the tailstock um, quick simple and I've already spent nine minutes talking about it so I'll leave it at that folks because um, it takes on my connection about an hour and a half to upload nine minutes of video on YouTube, which is just crazy, but there you go. Um, so, one ML7 tailstock. Um, I have nothing more to say about that really, except that quite a hefty item, no, not massively heavy, but you know, there's a bit of weight in her.
So yeah, um, this is just a, a small update until I get started on the lathe and uh, I'll update you I think with the um, completed um, cabinet within the next week or two. Uh, I'm hoping the paint will arrive shortly. One thing I'll mention before I go is that the cabinet was nearly complete um, in the fact that I had scraped all the old paint off it. Um, however, uh, the inside shelves of the cabinet had been, uh, the paint had been mixed with a grit or a sand to give it better um, adhesion possibly or some something. And it proved to be a real bugger to remove so I've actually resorted to a, a hand grinder with some sanding discs that I obtained recently so that's helped speed up the process tremendously and um, doesn't actually seem to affect the metal at all so it's even better than shot blasting um, and as soon as I get the paint home I'll get it, it um, painted and in place and then we'll um, We'll see what I feel like doing after that. Okay, that's all for now folks. Cheerio.